Uh, this is a MIG-135 uh, welder from uh, Northern Industrial Welders, Northern Industrial Tool. And uh, actually I actually got this over five years ago and I checked it about four months after I got it, it didn't work. And I never bothered to send it back. And I was gonna throw it away, but then I got curious. <laughs> yeah, I know, a little crazy, but uh, basically I'm gonna go through troubleshooting this welder, even though I don't know nothing about welders. I know a lot about cars, well, quite a bit about cars. But for one thing, the problem with it was um, the fan didn't turn on when you turn the power on. Now right now the power's off and it's unplugged. But the fan didn't turn on when the power was turned on. That was one problem. The other thing is uh, the wire feed motor wasn't working. Now, for instance, you know, I have this hooked up to an ohm meter. You know, it just, these are the two leads that plug into the case. And this is the trigger assembly. So if you're gonna check the um, you know wire feed, which you would do, in other words, the trigger to make sure it's getting power to the contacts when you pull the trigger. So when I pull the trigger, you can see it's got con con conductivity. So the trigger is working fine. You release the trigger, and it goes back to infinite. So that checks the trigger. I figured it was fine anyway because it was uh, making a clicking noise. Now this this uh, welder has you know for the gas input it's uh, excuse me you know you put the argon CO2 in here it's just a cap covering it reset switch uh, you can put the spool on here and of course you got the grounding clamp and reverse these wires depending on if you have it for um, flux core or if you're using your flux core wire or if you're using a regular wires with uh, shielding gas now. I haven't been messing around with welding in like a gazillion years, but uh, I decided to figure out what was wrong with this, considering that if I buy another one, I'll probably have a problem at some point in the future, and I always get curious about these mechanical things. Now obviously I don't have the wire fed into here, but the motor's not pumping, you know, it's not working when you pull the trigger, so nothing's turning at all. Now one other thing that was wrong with this was the fan wasn't working in the back too. There was actually two problems. The wire feed motor wasn't working. And now if you turn it on, you can hear the fan motor working, so that part's fixed. Um, the other thing I like about this is, you know, there's no wire in here obviously, but just to show you it works, you know, it works. <laughs> so the tip is gets hot you pull the trigger so the only thing that's not working is this wire feed motor so I'm gonna check that and uh, check various connections in here uh, the next thing I did was um, before I actually did this before too took off the case and uh, sometimes you know this is a brand new unit it's never been used even though it's five years old and it's been sitting around but it's never got rusty or anything what I did was I pulled off these connections um, and I plugged them back in a few times and I noticed the wire was loose here and I checked everything and also what I did was I put an ohm meter across everything in other words check from here to this from this wire to the top of the nut make sure it's got you know conducts electricity everything in other words from this wire wherever it goes to check where it's connected to in other words check this back to here and you know I'd re-plug in all these different things and that's how the fan started working again but what I've noticed is um, well I noticed that the power there's uh, even if I apply power to this motor directly the wire feed motor directly it does not spin and I think it's around 12 volts so I experimented with about 10 volts and I tried 36 volts nothing it didn't spin wasn't jammed up took the gearing out gearing wasn't jammed up so it's probably the motor itself that's bad but what I want to do is recheck that and I noticed uh, these last two end wires on here are to the little wire feed motor and I want to do is check to make sure that when I turn this unit on and pull the trigger that it's getting voltage it should be getting about 12 volts approximately to that motor itself 
So then if the motor is getting voltage, then the problem is the motor itself, the little wire feed motor, and just get that replacement part, put it in, it should be okay. But I think it's good to actually learn how something is uh, comes together so you can actually uh, fix it because no matter what, you're going to have a problem at one point in time and you're going to be dealing with it at one point in time anyway. So uh, this looks like a fairly simple setup. Now obviously the wires disc the uh, power is disconnected and everything on this. But a lot of times if you just keep disconnecting the wires, pulling them out, and I got these on here real tight now, they're kind of hard to disconnect. And uh, just keep putting them back on and just keep plugging these back in a few times. It could be, be like it's not making good contact because it's very simple. There's very simple setup in here and it has, no, has had no use. So um, here's where the leads come in from, uh, you know, from like where your, your trigger is. And, um, you know, I, I just double checked everything from where they go to and um, with the ohmmeter. So the next step is to check for the uh, proper voltage getting to the motor itself. Well, I took out the motor for the wire feed motor. And if you look, if I, uh, this has to be soldered back on. And this is an ohmmeter. And you can see it shows uh, continu continuity between the, the uh, two ends. Now, if I put voltage to it, the voltage will drop to zero. So it's telling me I think the motor's shorted. But the next step I want to do is to check to see if um, when I pull the trigger, those two wires that feed this are getting voltage. They're not getting voltage when this is hooked up because I think this motor is shorted out inside. I might try to take this apart and see what happens. Well, I have the uh, meter hooked up to those two wires that run into the um, motor, the wire feed motor, and the meter set on voltage. And I checked it against a 9 volt battery to make sure it's reading correctly. And it reads either way, whatever way the polarity is, this meter will read. It's a cheap one, but it works. And it read, I have it on the right scale. So if it says 9 volt battery, it reads 9 volts. So I turn the machine on and pull the trigger. No voltage. So besides the motor fried, I think there's something else wrong with this damn thing. So I don't know if I'm gonna bother fixing it or not because the motor is about 50 bucks and a whole new one's like 300. So we're just gonna use one, use this thing for parts if it's any good for anything.